Welcome to the Church Security Answer Man video blog, where it's all about ministry safety, security, and making a difference for people. And now, your host, a former law enforcement officer, criminal justice trainer, and security expert, Captain Joe Puckett. What's up, everyone? Welcome to our ministry security community. This is the Church Security Answer Man, and I'm your host, Joe Puckett. I'm so glad you're joining me today. And today we're discussing, it's gonna be a quick topic, it's gonna to be a quick discussion, but we're looking at five small ways that we can tighten our church security in current times. And I wanna remind you as we get started, it's uh, uh, this community, it's not about your denomination, it's not about the size of your ministry. It really is about protecting our people and our facilities, the basic security principles as they relate to the ministry or the church environment. So today we're going to be talking about these quick little things that I want to discuss with you. Some of them may take some pre-planning and thought in the process, but uh, they're simple little things that we can begin to think about. Uh, and, and these are just things I've run across in articles uh, and different things that I have seen that got me thinking, you know what, you're right, these little things that we can maybe make adjustments. And, and again, these are opinions, these are thoughts. You pick and choose what works for your ministry. The first thing I want to mention, just what about uh, controlling our hours? Uh, we might call them hours of operation or hours that our facilities are open. We might tend to put a cap on those kind of things relative to today because we know the later in the evening it gets, the uh, you know more dangerous statistically things can be, especially if people are locking up by themselves, those kind of things. You know, having little rules of during operation that somebody's in the building when the building is open, unlocked, those kind of things. I, I think those are good things for us to talk about with our people, kind of tightening things up, giving a, give, letting people know that we're thinking about these concepts. So having a specific hours of operations, a set of operations, you know, a set of hours that we're operating within and trying to keep people from being alone. We're always talking about that in an empty building. So we want to have two people that are locking up. And the earlier we're doing that, the better, as I see it. So, you know, and then what about communicating with the members? What about setting up uh, some sort of system where we communicate better with them? There's, there's all kinds of public address systems, many new systems relative to texting. Texting, by the way, very popular with uh, younger folks and so up through uh, middle-aged folks. Uh, if we look at the different categories of people, do a little bit of research on that, but look at software that can send texts to people and be able to communicate with them what's going on, uh, your hours of operation and, and updates to things. If there's issues, good things, bad things, being able to communicate and especially if there's some kind of emergency news affecting the church, you know, get, start getting folks to volunteer to have their cell phone numbers listed with you so that you can text them. It's, and again, it's becoming more popular than uh, emailing these days if we look at the studies on communication. So having that plan, being able to make uh, church members aware of new security measures, new things that you need to be able to communicate to them. So look at that, do some research. We're talking about it with our team, doing some research as well about some good communication software out there that can get people to opt into uh, being texted, uh, being sent messages, those kind of things. So how about the keyed entrances? And I know some churches look at this already, but how about really beginning to look at how many keys you have issued or how people can get into buildings. You know, there's so many different people that have keys sometimes to our facilities. We may even lose track of how many people are actually have those keys. And then the problem is, is those people that we forget and lose track of who have the keys, lose track of their keys. And so we want to, I think we want to look at you know, we've got volunteers, we've got staff members that have keys. We want to look at really controlling that. And, and you know, and then the more people that have access in and out, that means the more opportunities we have to have a building left 
unsecure, have doors left open. So, you know, I think that all the doors should have key systems, but, you know, and trying to maybe get focused to one or two doors. Could your facility, if you don't have it already, is it possible that you could have one entrance that is the general entrance and everybody else stays away from the other doors and we have one general entrance. So it, it may be when we have our major ministry times, we could have, you know, multiple doors because we've got lots of people going in and out. So we're going to lock those all up. Somebody's going to check the, all those doors after our main ministry time, say on Saturday or Sunday or Wednesday night or Thursday night, whatever that looks like. But how about other times, maybe for some of the smaller ministries, youth ministries, women's ministries, men's ministries, Maybe we focus uh, any of those people having keys down to one or two doors. Maybe we have a main entrance into our main building and a main entrance into our secondary building, whatever that uh, looks like for you. And, you know, what about even electronic code locks? And, uh, you know, on a one door, a lock system, maybe that's electronic that you could maybe even how about lock or unlock from your uh, cell phone or a tablet? How about if we're unlocking things for people to let them in, to let the first people in or let certain people in? What about that kind of thing? Or maybe we can electronically be able to see if it's locked as well. We start talking about maybe cameras in, as part of the process as well. And, you know, giving people codes to those electronic locks. So we get it narrowed down to, if it's not our main services, then we have one or two doors that people can get into, and those have some sort of electronic keypad on them, where we can change the code every so often. So we can track who has the code uh, and, and uh, who's in charge of certain ministries, who has the code, who has access. And then every so often, maybe every year, or so, maybe every, <clears throat> pardon me, every six months to a year, we're changing that code. Or maybe you decide it should be every couple of years, whatever that looks like. You know, and, and, and really paying attention to the fact that burglary is a big problem. Our churches are open. We have uh, equipment in them, sound equipment, music equipment, those kind of things. And, you know, burglary is uh, most often the crime committed against churches. It's one of the big ones simple little break-ins. People sometimes don't even have to break in because the doors are open or it's easy access to break in. So, you know, we typically don't have alarm systems because we have so many people in and out of our buildings oftentimes because of numerous programs, meetings. You know, oftentimes we just don't have good security systems and we don't have good concepts of that security. So, you know, one thing that we can prevent are these break-ins, these thefts. If we look at na nationwide, very important thing to focus on. Let's have some discussions on that. How can we minimize who has keys, which doors are unlocked for these different meetings or different services, those kind of things. What is necessary? So we start locking down this place just a little bit more and have it be more secure. So. Uh, generally, churches have poor key control, poor access control, poor security of their doors and their buildings. So if you focused on just that aspect, keys, uh, hours of operation we talked about, starting to limit those kind of things, that would start to tighten, start to tighten up the security. And so, you know, you've got AV equipment, sound systems, computers, ceremonial objects for our different religions and uh, denominations. And so these things are all very desirable to be stolen. They, they, these folks can get money for these kind of things. So, you know, so we look at locking down the place a little bit better. And that really just takes meetings and discussions and, and coming up with a security plan of how can we do that and then communicate it with your people that we need to do that these days is lock this place down a little bit more. And I think most people are going to be understanding of that. And we can point out to them some of the reasons. There's plenty of news stories nationwide of churches that are losing things, things that are being stolen from them. And then, you know, I certainly have a suggestion that maybe you should mark things for identification. Make sure they have your information on them somewhere, maybe even in a, in a hidden spot within the device. Maybe we take a 
back little board off of uh, one of our electronic devices and screw the board, take it out and uh, place our information inside that and then put the uh, cover, the board back and so that our information is inside there. Also in one of our Church Security TV episodes, uh, episode 18-002, uh, we talk about the tracker device and there's also the tile device. These are electronic devices that you can uh, uh, place on things. You want to keep them where they can receive a signal. And then they use a crowd sourcing method to track them. So if somebody else that has that tracker app walks near your stuff when it's sitting in a van where somebody stole it and put it in a van or put it in a house somewhere, when somebody gets close to that music equipment that was stolen from you and it has that tracking device in it, it uh, works off of their cell phone, their app, and sends a message to you of where that device is. So it's not a 100% guarantee that we get that equipment back, but it's pretty good opportunity for us relative to the cost of that. You know, and another big issue that, you know, what we might uh, tend to focus on uh, as ways to tighten church security in these current, current times would be our parking lots. And, and I talk about it every once in a while. You can look at the statistics. A majority of issues happen in our parking lots. Cars being broken into, uh, violence in our parking lots. Some of it, you know what, it occurs at times when we don't care. Tuesday night at two o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, it's not as big a concern because there's nobody at the church. We can't afford to run 24 hour security at most of our facilities. So, but you know, other times people stealing things from people while they're in church. That's a big deal in any kind of functions. It's a concern. So, you know, we don't necessarily have to beef up security. You know, that's one suggestion. Have somebody that's out walking around, possibly twos, uh, two people walking around the parking lot uh, for safety reasons, but patrolling the parking lot, making sure that things are not happening or going in and out. If they have to go in and perform usher duties and then back out to the parking lot, and walk around a little bit, back in for usher duties, whatever that looks like, but just paying attention to our parking lot. Now, besides that, we can also encourage our people with signage or notes in the bulletin or announcements to please lock their cars and don't leave anything valuable in your uh, vehicle that's in view. The things that you wouldn't want taken, don't leave those kind of things in view. Assign those staff to monitor the parking lot where you can and then talk to our members. And, you know, sometimes I, I just saw a news article about several cars that were broken into uh, uh, in a church parking lot here just a while back. And I couldn't believe the things people were saying were stolen. One lady said she just knew it when she came out that her computer was going to be gone. Her laptop that she left in the car and sure enough, it was gone. Somebody else, their purse, somebody else, their gun. They left a gun in their car during a church service. And so, uh, you know, talking to our people about not leaving those kind of things in their car, leaving them at home, uh, and also locking their vehicles. That could be a good thing for us to focus on just to help prevent some of these items. And then we look at enhancing uh, a watch over our church. You know, we can start talking to people and say, hey, can you help us watch the church a little bit? This is the kind of stuff that should be going on during these hours. Can you help us watch it? Maybe you have a neighbor to the church that you get along with well. And I know sometimes, Neighbors to the church aren't real happy about the influx of cars and noise and that kind of thing. So we don't always get along the best with our neighbors, but if we do, hey, why not be able to talk to them and ask them to watch out for things, make it okay for them to call the police. Talk to them about that. How about talking to our postal folks, UPS drivers, FedEx folks that are in and out of our facilities, you know, ask them to keep a watch out and let us know if something doesn't look right. Send us a note, send us a text or stop by and let us know what you see. How about other businesses, other drivers in the area? Maybe there's regular deliveries or other things going on. Other businesses in the area, ask them to help us keep an eye on the church, especially when people are not there. What should it look like on certain nights? Maybe even give them a list of what's going on and say, this is kind of what should be going on at these different times this time of the year. And how about a video system? We're uh, getting ready to do some uh, research, do a, uh, a church security TV on video systems. There's some great systems out there these days. 
and you know look at video systems you don't have to buy the fancy stuff for the entire perimeter of the church what about just putting in a couple of the less expensive cameras that will record there's a couple of those uh, the Arlo system right now it will record and be a watch for you and I think it will even notify a cell phone if it detects some kind of motion but inexpensive like that that just watch for things detect motion or just record for you and then maybe pick up a more expensive system for the sensitive areas if you have a main entrance where people go into maybe the sidewalks all convene in a certain area and come into the main entrance what about putting one of the uh, systems a little bit more expensive but the ring system uh, and they have doorbells and all kinds of motion sensor lights. What about putting some of those? Uh, uh, just one in that one place. And it's now going to record video for you. You got to pay for a fee. It costs about, for the first one, I believe it's $100 a year for the recording service and all the features that become automated for you. But it has motion lights. So when somebody walks into the area, the lights come on. That's a deterrent itself. It's got a video camera on it. Now where you're starting to record, it'll notify your cell phone or you choose the people. It can notify multiple people via self to their cell phone, send a signal that there's somebody in uh, motion that has been sensed in that area you can sign on to your cell phone look at those people see what's going on you can even literally talk to them if you see somebody standing out there when they're not supposed to be you can literally talk to them you can set zones for where you want it to notify you it pick up motion or you can put set areas where you don't want it to tell you if there's motion in that area uh, and you can also set up times a time you know so obviously if you have a seven o'clock service you don't want it notifying you of people going in and out until like 10 or 11 o'clock to where you know there's people not going in and out so look at those kind of systems and again we're going to be looking at some of these to help you identify them put in some basics of uh, video systems in other areas and put in the fancier and there isn't any reason why you can't get the cheap lights the motion sensor lights you can get them for 20 or 30 bucks where they just sense motion and come on at night you could put some of those around in different areas and then pick your one area where you're going to put a system like the ring system which has all the fancy stuff and notifies you if somebody's in that area so you just pick certain spots and then you can literally talk to them i think it's so cool so you know what about contracting with a security company or how about I've even seen some businesses that are contracting with cab companies and asking them to have somebody just drive by. It's cheaper than security. You definitely have to look at licensing and any of those kind of issues with hiring those folks. But hey, what about just especially smaller towns? You've got cabs oftentimes out running around that are not that busy and you might could uh, contract with them to drive by or do something like that, perform a function for you that uh, is less expensive with them over some uh, security company. And again, I'm not trying to undercut security, uh, but I do want to look at the different systems and I'm not giving you legal advice, that kind of stuff, but I wanna throw some ideas out there. Run it by your attorneys, your insurance company, run it by the local officials to see if that would be something that you could legitimately have them do. Uh, or what are some other things, thinking outside the box, could we have people checking on the church how could we do that and thinking outside the box less expensive but having somebody be able to stop by or drive through after our services to make sure everything is good after those services so that's it for this edition of the church security answer man i'm glad you were here i'm glad you listened a little bit shorter episode this time don't forget though we've got information all day every day at the churchsecurityanswerman.com on our website. That's churchsecurityanswerman.com. Uh, and, and, and thank you again for joining us. Join us at some of those other places. We've got Church Security TV, which is video options uh, on that website. So if you're seeing or hearing this anywhere else, come on over there to our website and check out the other things that we have going on there. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you have a safe and secure week.
Thanks for watching the Church Security Answer Man video blog. Get more by joining us anytime at churchsecurityanswerman.com.